Okay, well good evening all. Um, just want uh, to talk about a few things that's uh, been going on in the sky and stuff and uh, let's see what we've got there. Now first of all, Comet Lovejoy is still very much alive and with us and uh, it's moving on up now into um, Cassia, towards Cassiopeia, just around here now. It's um, uh, the, the, the apparent movement, of course it moves at the same speed really, but uh, the apparent movement it seems to be slowing down now where it's actually just got a little bit to go and it is. Um, being up in that high part of the sky, it is of course circumpolar now. Um, big problem with actually seeing it at the moment is, is, the, uh, is the almost full moon. Um, but I've seen people getting a couple of images where you can actually make out the comet. Um, one rather fabulous image that, uh, that came quite unexpectedly. There is a, um, a telescope working in that part of the sky um, that, that is actually a Fermilab scope um, looking for dark energy. And they actually focused on that particular piece of sky because they thought there wasn't very much in it. But uh, they actually got photobombed by a comet. So there we are. That's uh, Comet Lovejoy actually appeared in the images from the, from the Fermilab Dark Energy Camera. Um, and actually got probably one of, the, one of the best pictures I've seen so far. Um, the trouble is they've got to do all that area of sky again. So um, that's this time without commenting. So that's, uh, that's Comet Lovejoy. Still there. Still worth having a look at. Um, another thing that's happening at the minute, um, the, the Dawn probe is, is actually approaching um, the dwarf planet Ceres in the asteroid belt. Um, and something rather strange has appeared on one of the pictures that, that, that uh, the Dawn has sent back. Mm. And that's these lights here. They've actually got searchlights or something in the crater there. Looks like it's a reflective object of some sort, but uh, um, interesting to see how that turns out as, as the Dawn probe gets a little bit nearer uh, to Ceres. Okay, the, the, the planets are quite well configured for things in the minute. Uh, Mercury has, has been gone from, um, it was it's probably slightly visible, I never got to see it, but slightly visible in the morning just a week or so ago, um, but very low down and not, not a good morning apparition. Um, Venus, on the other hand, um, is, is looking quite fantastic at the moment. Um, if you do actually, if you, I don't know if you, uh, we had a little look before we came in. Um, and Venus was behind clouds, unfortunately, so I wasn't able to take a quick sneaky photo. Um, but actually, at this moment, um, Uranus is very, very close, um, about a third of the moon diameter um, away from, from Venus. It won't be quite that close tomorrow, but actually tomorrow it's probably less likely to be lost in the glare. If you do get a clear sky tomorrow evening, then um, Uranus will actually be just over a degree below and to the right of Venus. And, uh, you should be able to see that in binoculars or a, or a photo will probably show that more, more readily. Um, Mars is, uh, is sort of dropping down a bit in the sky. Um, Venus and Mars passed each other uh, a week or so ago. And uh, Mars is dropping down and, and again that, that will pass Uranus uh, next week, um, around about next Tuesday. Uh, Mars and Uranus will be very close together. And that will be an interesting colour contrast, the red of Mars and the green of Uranus, if you do manage to get a photo of it. Um, but, uh, Uranus, I always find, just, is it never appears as more, even a scope appears as never more than a, a, a sort of greenish blob. Um, Jupiter, of course, is still fantastic, and um, do check out Terry's email, um, which he sends out. If you haven't got it, talk to Terry. But, um, um, but also, I, I republish those on the website under the tab that says News, just along the top of the, um, the website there. and. Um, Terry has listed in that a number of moon events. At this time, Jupiter being near opposition, the, the, the plane of the moons is, uh, is sort of in line with us, and so uh, the moons will pass in front of the planet, and indeed sometimes in front of each other. Uh, so there's some events there that Terry has listed in his email, and that's on the website. Have a look at that. Um, Saturn is quite difficult to see at the moment. Uh, it, is, it is visible in the morning. Um, about 5 o'clock in the morning you'll be able to see Saturn reasonably well in Scorpio above Antares. If you can see Antares and Saturn, it should be very obvious, um, about 10 degrees above it or so. Um, and it will on next Wednesday morning, the 12th, the morning of the 12th, um, so 5 or 6 o'clock, um, it will be close to um, the Moon, which will be at close to that third quarter at that stage. So um, that's Saturn. Um, Uranus we mentioned, and Neptune I'm afraid to say we won't see for some while yet. Um, so that's where they are with the planets. Um, I did have a little observing challenge last time we, we met, and um, this, this is a tricky one. Um, but this, this was the moon, um, the, the very thin moon, 
Um, and I did, I, I will tell you now, I did not see this. Um, I couldn't see, I didn't have any optical aids with me, but I knew where it would be in the sky. I, I went up on the, on the roof at work and that there, you can see there is, 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 is a, an 18 and a half hour moon. Um, and uh, that's, that's it, just actually setting um, over Black Mountain, taken from, uh, from the roof of my work, just down the road. So uh, I did manage to get that, but I haven't seen it. Um, as Terry says, it doesn't count unless you see it with the naked eye. <laughs> so I think that is the, the earliest photographed moon, our youngest photographed moon ever from Ireland. So that is very good. Yeah, that's, uh, it probably stands a chance. It probably, I think it would be difficult to get it any earlier. Yeah. <laughs> But um, that was, that was uh, an opportunity, so I'm pleased with that. Um, Peter managed to get some pictures of, um, of the sun uh, yesterday. Um, not very much happening on the sun, although it's come back to life a little bit from the way it's been uh, uh, the last sort of week or so, where there's been next to nothing like it. But um, um, active regions 22, 92 and 93 are quite sort of um, quite obvious and quite nice. But uh, the, the big thing that happened um, in the last sort of uh, 48 hours or so is that we have had an explosion uh, and um, yeah, this, is, this was active region 2290 right on the edge of the sun so I don't think we'll get anything uh, um, particularly from, from that flare but that's an M8 class flare, um, quite a bright one uh, and actually caught by, by one, of the, one of the satellite cameras there. Um, and um, so that's, that's that. I don't think we'll get any auroras out of this. There, have, there was a time sort of about two weeks or so ago where um, we seem to be getting photographic auroras pretty much every night from those who've got clear sky up on the coast. But, uh, um, but, but I think that that's all seems to have died down now. And uh, anything that I've seen actually on space weather or so has been from Alaska or Sweden or somewhere. It's, uh, it's not coming down as far as us at this, at this time. So that's, um, that's the sun. Have a little look around us, the, the, the sky. Um, I'm still calling this the winter sky. If you're a meteorologist, apologies if you think it's spring, but uh, um, they, they start it on the first of the month, and we all know that it uh, doesn't become spring until until the uh, until the equinox. So there we are, um, looking sort of um, towards the southwest about about now, eight o'clock on the fourth of March. You see, we've still got the, the winter constellation. We've still got Orion very high up. Um, Sirius visible very easily in the in the south, and uh, you know the, 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 using Orion as the, as the road map, you take Orion's belt here and you follow the, that belt downwards to Sirius, brightest star in the sky, and also upwards to Aldebaran, and Aldebaran is distinctly <coughs> orange there, and a little bit further up will take you up to the Seven Sisters as well, um, and a good a good game that I um, do with the. The, the young people in the outreach things is, is, is get them to try and count the seven sisters, which is not such an easy game as, as, as it sounds, um, because um, I only ever see six for a start. Um, some people can easily see nine. Um, I have met someone who claimed to see 13, naked eye, and I can believe that. Um, of course, you look through a scope and there's about 150, 200, depending on the, on, on the power of your scope. So it is, it is a very... Um, very tight and very, very good star cluster. Um, incidentally, the Japanese don't call it the Seven Sisters. Um, they call it Subaru. And if you look on the front of a Subaru car, you'll see six stars. So uh, the man who actually designed the cars, he obviously didn't have that great eyesight. <laughs> okay, we move on a little bit later in the night. And uh, if you start looking about midnight, this is midnight tonight. Um, um, you see that um, it's dominated, the sky is dominated by Leo, particularly, looking rather splendid at the minute. Um, and of course, Jupiter uh, is, is very close to moving towards Regulus now. Uh, and, and the moon, the, the almost full moon, the moon is full um, actually tomorrow at night. Um, but it looks pretty full tonight. I mean, we just caught a glimpse of it coming, uh, uh, coming down here this evening and uh, looking pretty bright. But actually, um, this is the smallest moon of the year, as it happens. So uh, uh, we have a little comparison there of, uh, of, of two different moons. Um, that is uh, the moon um, on March the 5th. And it's at its smallest there, just a, a 30 arc minutes or so. Um, and this, this is my birthday moon, as it happens, the biggest one. Um, and um, that's, that's on September 27th, it'll be 34 arc minutes. And the interesting thing about that 
particular full moon is that in the early hours of the 28th it will be totally eclipsed um, and will be a very splendid sight. Um, unfortunately, uh, that, that eclipse peaks at about um, 10 to 4 in the morning um, on, the, on the summer time that will be in force at that point. Um, but very well worth seeing in, uh, in, in September. Um, but this one, it's, it's, um, I think we decided that um, with all the hype about super moons and so on, we call this one a mini moon because it's the smallest possible. Okay. Um, and it's that time of year when, um, if we go a bit further, um, I've, I've sort of put the clock forward a week here um, just to get the moon out of it because that's, uh, that's what you really want. Um, if you look at sort of um, late in the night, uh, midnight or so, Leo will be over here and you'll have the, the constellation Arcturus will be visible, um, Virgo, Spike will be sort of down the, the bottom there somewhere. Um, and this area here um, between the tail of Leo, the nebula there, and uh, Vindimiatrix, the star in Virgo, this area in between those two stars is the realm of the galaxies and that whole area um, has loads and loads and loads of galaxies in the Virgo cluster um, and you've got sort of um, that little curved area there is called Makarian's chain and you've got lots and lots of Messier objects and NGC objects sweeping through that area with a big telescope really just looks quite fantastic it's full of galaxies and uh, you get a, a dark night sort of round about uh, 8 o'clock now till, till May probably you can get a good view of that um, it starts to get too, too light at night after that um, but that really is, um, if you want to have a Messier marathon, that would be a, probably a good sort of time to be thinking about it. And um, brings us to the eclipse. I've been doing a bit of research about the eclipse, and uh, only 16 more sleeps to the eclipse. <laughs> um, the nice smiley face eclipse there. It will be, I'll be talking about it in depth at the next talk, obviously, but um, it will be um, peaking. Um, and the sun will look, uh, sorry, the moon, yeah, the sun will look like that. Um, with the moon obscuring most of it. 93% um, here in Belfast, a little, bit, a little bit more as you go further north. And uh, you'll notice um, a dent appear in the sun if you look at it through properly filtered safe material. Um, or do it by projection or various other methods which I'll describe in the next talk. Um, you'll see a dent appear at about um, half past eight or so. The first contact is 8.26, you probably won't won't see that, but by 8.30 you might see a little dent appearing, um, and that will continue through. But unfortunately, you know, I, I'm unusual amongst astronomers in that I have seen a 97% partial eclipse, and um, because it was in London, and it was a 1999 one, and I just couldn't get away. So I, I saw it from London, and I saw 97%. And actually the effects are quite well worth seeing. You don't get the totality, but it does get cold, uh, it does get noticeably dark, because it does so in a very slow way, um, your eyesight uh, you know, um, um, sort of starts to feel the colour drain out of things, but it's always adjusting um, to, to, to keep the brightness similar. So it's, a, it's an interesting experience, I'll describe it more um, later, but um, this sliver of sun will move around from that side to that side and won't go away, and that's really the, the annoying bit about it. Um, I went out surveying um, just local places. I'm, I'm going to run a watch down, down in Larn, probably on the seafront. I have the option to move, to move back away from the seafront if the sea is rough and it's windy and all that sort of thing. But, uh, um, but what I think would be nice to see, this, this is more or less where I intend to be. The sun will actually be slightly higher and slightly to the left somewhere there on, um, on, on the 20th of March from that exact spot. Um, what I'd like to see, I think, each ripple on the water here reflects a little bit of sunlight. And when the sun is 93% eclipsed, each little dot there could be its own little crescent. So I think that might be quite nice to see. Um, so I'll try and get a waterfront view if I can, but uh, we'll talk much more about that next time. That is the sky, I don't know, that's all I have to say. There is an observing session, um, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. Friday the 13th or Saturday the 14th um, and it should be pretty dark and that's a good time to start scouting around those galaxies I was talking about. So that's, um, that's where we are at the minute. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you were there. Mm -hmm. So thanks very much to Paul.